Hey guys, all right, we're back again here at Detroit Rebuild Specialist. We got another easy uh, repair that you guys can do at your house, in your driveway, in the parking lot, doesn't matter where it's at. This is a very, very easy one. Um, this right here is called your crankcase separator or crankcase breather. So There's a couple different names for it, depending on what you want to call it. Um, but the most common failure with this guy is oil will pour out the bottom of the crankcase filter here. Okay, so if you got oil all down the back of your truck, uh, all down your oil pan, when this guy right here starts to leak, it's time to replace it. Okay, um, that's the one. That's one reason why you replace it. Another one is if you get a fault code for your uh, crankcase separator speed too low, um, the internal turbine that spins on the inside uh, has either seized up or it's, it's just not spinning correctly. Um, it needs to spin about 5,000 RPMs which you won't know that unless you have diagnostic link hooked up, but if you have a fault code for the speed too low, 95% of the time is, you could have a sensor issue or a harness issue, but 95% of the time it's the crankcase breather. So if you got oil coming out of it, or you got a, um, a check engine light on it, just go ahead and replace this bad boy, okay? Uh, it's very simple to do. Um, four bolts down here at the bottom, all right? You got a sensor up top, and then you got a plug here in the block, okay? That's the, that's the things you gotta take out to do this, okay? So we're gonna hop right in it. I'm gonna show you how to take it out. The tools we're gonna need are right here. Impact, you can use a ratchet, you can use a cordless impact. Uh, 16 millimeter, um, a pick to get your plug undone, a pair of dikes to cut the zip ties off that hold the harness, a scraper to get any kind of residue off the mounting area, um, quarter inch ratchet with a T30 Torx bit to take the sensor out because your new one's not going to come with a sensor. Um, and then a torque wrench to torque your bolts back. Um, this is going to come on the new ones. This is the, the tube, the, the vent tube. Normally they'll come with one already on there. Um, and this is the, st the seal that goes in the block. If your seal is leaking, you can go ahead and replace this while you have it off. All right, so let's jump right in it. All right. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is we're going to pop our sensor out, okay? You got a little gray tab right here. You just want to take that tab and push it down and pop it out. And then you just push it down and pull it out and it comes right out, okay? Like I said, you're going to have a zip tie back here. It should be zip tied. If not, not a big deal. Cut that zip tie off. You take that harness and just hang it down, okay? Next step, you want to take your your tube here, you're gonna push the top and the bottom in together and pull out. And that's how that pulls out, okay? Very simple, it just pops right in. And to pull it out, you push your tabs in and you pull. All right, very, very simple. Next step. Now, when this is in chassis, you won't be able to get a cordless impact in here um, to tighten this up. You're gonna to have to use a ratchet, okay? But it's very simple. Zip those out. You might want to get a bucket underneath here. Uh, you may lose a little oil when this comes off, so don't lay directly up underneath it. And then just, it pulls right off, okay? That's what it looks like. Very light, it's not heavy. Uh, behind that, you're gonna have a gasket. Ours fell off. Yours is more likely gonna stick to the block. All right, this is the old style gasket. The new one is not gonna look like this. It's gonna look a little different, okay? Just pull that gasket off. Take your little starting fluid here, or brake cleaner, whatever you want to use, spray it off, get it nice and clean, and just hit it with some Scotch-Brite to clean off any old residue so when you put the new one on, she mounts right up, okay? Very simple, very easy, all right, nice and clean. You can hit that with a buffing wheel if you want to. I don't think you necessarily have to on this one because it uses a metal gasket versus an O-ring. So you don't really get much uh, left on residue on this one. So anyhow, that's how you take that off, okay? And then you just reverse. Um, so you would actually, I take that back, bring it over here. We're gonna bring this over here. I gotta show you something. 
So your new your new crankcase is not going to come with a speed sensor in it. Okay, that's your speed sensor. So we got to take that speed sensor out so we can install it in the new crankcase breather. Now, obviously, if uh, if you had an issue with the sensor, then you want to replace that while you have it out. Uh, but if it's if you're replacing it because it's leaking oil, then you can just reuse the sensor. Okay, you take a T30 Torx bit, get it in here, pop it loose. Pull that out, and the sensor will just pull right out the top. All right, just like that. Okay, so we don't have a new one here today uh, to put back on here, so we're just going to put this used one back on. Like I said, this is a video on how to change it. So if this was your brand new one out of the box, it's going to look exactly like this. Take your sensor, install your sensor back in it. Set this down for a second so I can grab my tool here. Alright. Snug that up. I don't know what the torque on this is. Um, so really you just you just want to snug it up. That's all you're wanting to do. You're not trying to break it. Just snug it up. Okay, so now that you got your sensor back in. Obviously, your new one's gonna be clean on the back side. You can take your gasket, go ahead if you want to and put a bolt through your crankcase breather here to hold your gasket, put one on each side. See there, put one that side <clears throat> and one right there. That'll hold your gasket on while you go up in there with this thing. All right, bring it up, line it up, start your bolts. Okay. Come here. All right, we'll put those in. I'm going to go ahead and clip our top piece in. That's going to kind of hold it up until I torque my bolt. So that, just pop that in. That'll pop in and stay. You can run these up lightly. That bolt is not started. Why you, that's a perfect example of why you always start all your bolts before you go tightening stuff up. Okay, I'm glad I did that because that shows you guys why you just never run bolts in with out having them started. Okay, see that one feels like the threads might be a little messed up. I'm going to pop this off real quick and look at that. threads here that bolt I didn't like the way that bolt went in okay so we just had a little burr on our bolt there there we go okay prime example look at there we learned something today don't ever tighten your bolts up until you get them all started that's how you strip out bolt holes, cross thread stuff. All right, go back. There we go. We started a lot better that time. Okay, that bolt's damaged. That's why it did that. We'll have to get a new bolt for that one. Yeah, that bolt's damaged. Okay. So obviously you would get a new bolt for that one. We don't have one here with us. So now you can run these up. All right. Pop your piece back in. Now these bolts torque to 44 foot-pounds. 
go back with your torque wrench. Put it on 44 foot pounds. And simple as that. All right, and you just change your crankcase breather in your driveway. Come back, route your sensor back in, plug it up, push it in, and push your gray tab back in to lock it in there. All right. <clears throat> and that, my friends, is how you change a crankcase breather. So, very easy job. Um, if you have any questions, if you don't feel comfortable doing it, let us know. We'll do it for you. Um, if you got any other videos you want us to do, leave us a comment, and um, we'll just keep.